Okay, hi guys. Um, we're in the shop today, and um, one of the things we've got to build for our little cabin and something that'll be used in our um, home eventually is what's called the compression ring for the roof. And so we're going to have to be able to create a radius cut on things. And I looked up some ideas on uh, building a radius cutter for a router, since that seems like it'll kind of work for what we're doing. And this is what I came up with. So this could be made out of a lot of different things, but <clears throat> I just chose a piece of uh, aluminum block since that's what I had. Um, got a couple of 7 16 rods here. Drilled out the holes a little bit in my router base here so that these would fit in there smoothly. They were some kind of metric size, but I just wanted something that used a real common rod that you can buy at a hardware store. And these fit into here. <clears throat> The other end of things, we've got this block. And that can be slid onto these rods at any point that you want. And then that'll change the dis distance between your uh, router bit that'll be in this point and this bearing. And it didn't have to be bearings, it could have just been a hole there, it would have pretty well served the same function, but I had the parts laying around, so I just went ahead and tried to use it. These uh, screws here that I'm putting in go all the way down to the rods, and it'll, when you tighten them up, it locks onto the rods so that this distance can't change at all. They don't slide. There's a couple of set screws that were already in the uh, router base fixture that allows that to um, be locked down at this point. So now, um, next step is going to be working on our uh, fixture here, this table. <clears throat> We're going cut to a, cut a circle out of that and then build these arc pieces out of some 2 by lumber that will eventually go together and form a, form a circle around on this. And we're going to cut the arc pieces to this size so it comes out of a standard piece of lumber. Then there will be glued up into the circle and then overlapping pieces will go on where they straddle over the top. You'll see how that goes as we progress along in here. Got a pilot hole started in our jig right here. And I uh, thought maybe I'd use this bearing to pilot the hole vertically. Since we're going to be building things out of um, two by material, we got to get our pivot point for our router base to be raised up in the air. Um, so I'm going to cut off some scrap of our uh, jig wood here. So it's going to be used to create that kind of a spacer.
Okay, so this is our jig so far. It's just a round base uh, part in the middle to support the cutter and we start putting pieces of wood around the outside of it that will eventually become a ring and then subsequent layers will go on alternately across the, the joints and then that will make it pretty strong and it will end up being six layers thick so now we gotta get to work uh, jointing this thing together uh, since the overlaps make up the majority of the strength we're just gonna put some biscuits in the corner there to kind of align things and hold it while it's gluing up and uh, should be interesting Okay, so that puts a biscuit in there so that we've got uh, got a joint line. It'll center things up and hold together while the glue sets. Well, you happy with what you did? Yep. Well guys, we're getting near the end. I'm building the compression ring for our small cabin. Um, gonna build the last one today. So far we have uh, five of them assembled. And I'll be finishing the sixth one here in just a few minutes. Started off cutting these parts using this <clears throat> plastic template and when I put it on here um, I cut out the parts but then when I actually go to assemble it um, just a little bit of movement in this template was enough to cause a discrepancy in the length of the material so hexagons weren't really coming out too well <clears throat> so I ended up having to recut things um, found out it was more efficient to measure between these two points and the saw is accurate enough that it um, that it cuts a good angle for these. We are end gluing these pieces together which isn't a very strong glue joint and using these biscuits in here to um, hold the joint together it's more of a temporary thing so that the parts will stay assembled so I can cut them out into a circle using the router um, and then <clears throat> we'll stack them alternating on the joints. So in other words, one the next layer up will be moved over to here, and then we'll just keep alternating those layers back and forth. So it'll end up being a really strong assembly when it's done, because that'll all be face glued, overlapping the the other uh, joints. So the first thing to do is to use the biscuit cutter and. Uh, Make a cut. That makes the saw cut in there when you push it in. And then your biscuits fit in there with glue and it just helps align the, the joints from one board to the next. I just have to start gluing the parts together. So put a fairly heavy coat of glue on the end here. Fill the biscuit slot. 
I don't have to glue all the way up to the end because this part's going to be cut off eventually. I put my paintbrush that I'm using to spread the glue in a plastic container with a piece of paper towel and it keeps that soft so that uh, I don't have to use a different brush every time so that helps save on brushes. Okay, I'm lining this up with marks on my jig and then as I go around and glue things together I just have to line up the other parts on the jig. And using clamps, using uh, vice grip clamps on this to um, hold things together, hold it down to the jig. Then, as I get uh, get everything further assembled, then I'll put screws through the ends of the wood to kind of clamp it together, and it'll hold it until it until uh, the glue has a chance to set up. Kind of exciting here at points where you're trying to get everything put together and forget to, to make a cut or put a biscuit in. Something that kind of helps a little bit is to use the template to find where the cut pieces are going to, or the wood will be cut off. And then, you know, where you can drive a screw without really getting into the part. When you're driving screws in to go through an angle on a board, it helps to start them straight in and then turn them in the direction you want to go. So I want to go kind of parallel to the other board grain there. I wanted to make a quick way of um, <clears throat> drawing circles. So I'm just going to take a piece of uh, welding wire and it could be any old piece of wire. Now I can just add a kink to it uh, where I want my pencil to draw a line. Put all 
the excess for use for another one. Now I can draw my radius marks on here just to get an idea of uh, where things will get cut at. I'm thinking maybe I'll go along with a uh, jigsaw first and uh, take off the excess material. Hi guys, we didn't uh, record anything too much on the uh, actual process of routing out our circles here. Uh, I did use a jigsaw and went around and cut away the majority of the material. And then, um, then we used the router, of course, to cut the radius on this thing. Uh, we used these bolts to bolt everything down to the, to the jig fixture here. And uh, then just went around and cut it. But one thing I wanted to add in here is that I added these stops so that this can slide rather than using these fixed uh, screws on here. And what that allows you to do is run the cutter into the, the material and then cut where if you set it fixed like that, the, the torque of this uh, blade hitting the wood is going to turn this into a giant gear and this thing's going to want to take off. So um, this allows you to come in and take lighter cuts until you get down to where, where you want to be. Um, and doesn't bog down the the cutter so much and if something does start to slip it kicks out and it's a safer way of doing things um, when you cut the inner part you do this same thing but you move these stops to this side of the rods and then that allows the cutter to slide into the work here and cut um, whereas otherwise it would get jammed up and cause the router just to take off so just kind of a safety thing use the stops to help keep this thing from getting jammed up and going crazy um, bolt the work down solid so it uh, it stays put where it, wa it wants to be and other than that cuts out some nice rings um, there were some issues with where it would gouge out or chip off some of the wood um, but we're going to fill that and it's just a structural item anyway so it's kind of it was kind of practice for what we're going to do on a bigger thing so we learned a lot of things about what we're going to do and we'll probably change that a little bit Okay, now we can start getting uh, rolling on putting these rings together in the stack. And originally I was just thinking of using these for alignment holes and possibly um, drilling them larger and putting some uh, dowels through them after they're done. I don't know if that's necessary for anything, but I uh, decided to use these uh, 5 16 threaded rods. They were two foot long so I just cut them in half to give me a 12 inch piece and then uh, we're gonna assemble these with a, a washer and a nut on them and these will fit through the through the ring. This will be the bottom ring and then we can screw the nut on the bottom and then uh, we'll just put one of these in each hole and then as we glue up the rings on here um, we'll get the offset done the way we want it. We can put nuts on here and screw it down and clamp it. We got other clamps um, so just as we go build up we can just start um, clamping everything together, wait for the that layer of glue to set up there, uh, sufficiently and then we'll go back and put the next layer on it. So
turn it. Okay, now I gotta hurry up and get one. Now layer number three is glued on, and as they say, you can never have too many clamps. <laughs> We're still short. Okay, we got our ring um, completed, and we're trying to figure out what we're going to end up doing is using these lag screws and putting them into the side of the ring, cutting the head off, and then this pin part, the shank of the bolt, will be used for the rafter to set on to. Um, that'll be just kind of an initial assembly thing. And then we'll have a long timber lock screw that'll go through the top and secure it into the ring. So the problem was that we were trying to figure out how we're going to get a straight hole into a round surface um, for our stud. So what we came up with was this. We've got a couple of spacers here that we came up with and then we've got this um, doweling jig which is an adjustable fixture that you use for putting dowels on boards um, when you join them together. What we're doing is we're setting it up as a fixture to be able to go straight into the ring. And we made marks on here to, to line things up where we want it to go. If you hold that Got part. It. Okay guys, this has been a really long video and uh, there was a lot to cover, but I'd really appreciate it if you take a look at some of our other videos. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe if you're interested in this sort of thing. Uh, we got a lot more coming on our build and hope to see you soon.